we just love music, and it, music inspires us more in a way than films inspire us when we go to make a film. We'd much rather kind of listen to something or connect with something different than the medium we're working in. So we had a lot of those music, a lot of those songs before we started shooting, and you know we were listening to KCRW one day, one day, and we heard um, "You Love Me" by Davachka, and we were like, "Oh my God, that's the sound of this movie. That's the the kind of hopeful, like the feeling of love and never giving up." And so, and then we heard Sufjan Stevens, and we just, you know. We actually made um, CDs for our actors of some of the music that we were thinking of, just so they'd sort of get into the um, the tone and get the sensibility that we were sort of going for. And I, I think music is, we always just look to music as a model, too, in terms of um, form and, and dynamics. And, you know, there's just so much you can learn from music, and, and I think it's very applicable to, to making films, too. So it's usually our... our you know, we always make a file of songs and music when we're working on a film that, you know, that we just keep playing for ourselves. Not necessarily what we'll use for the score, but music that inspires the storytelling. And what a great idea to make a, a CD and give it to your actors because it does establish a mood, whimsical, mm -hmm. dramatic. Mm -hmm. well, one of the first Whatever. jobs of the director is to make sure that everyone's making the same movie. And that may sound <laughs> oh, don't obvious, laugh. That's yeah. really but, important. but 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 you you really do have to kind of everyone the the crew the actors so music starts to rope everyone in. And rehearse, rehearsals, yeah. but we can talk about that. That, that no, that's a really important point. I I, uh, I don't think any of us can emphasize that en enough. That everyone's making the same movie, and everyone including is including the producers, so really, you know, especially you the producers, the directors, and the writers. Yeah. That's where yeah. you start. It starts with. there. You yeah. must because oh, I thought this was funny. No, no, it's a drama. And you do that halfway through the movie, you are in trouble, yeah. big yeah. trouble. Yeah. You know, one, one of my own favorite things is halfway through a movie, if I feel we're drifting when we're shooting, I stop everything and say, tonight, we're not looking at dailies, we're reading the script. We oh, have to remind yeah. ourselves why we're making this movie. Uh, yeah. But it, it's a really serious point. We laugh about it a lot because it's tragic when it doesn't, when everyone's making a different movie. We always judge whether it's a book or a script, you know, we try to read it in as short a period of time as we can and then you, I, it's just a gut feeling really um, when, you, when you finish something and you feel like you've had an experience, you know, or you've, you've, it's taken you somewhere or it's made you think about something that you want to think about for the next two years, you know. Um, I, I think that, you know, for us it's sort of, is the subject matter, is the thing that this movie is um, exploring, is that, is it deep enough or is it, um, you know, does it have the, the uh, depth that can keep us interested for the next two years? And, and is it something that can really be mined, you know? I mean, a simple way to look at it is just, is it about something? I, you know, is it about, you know, so, you know, uh, Little Miss Sunshine was about our need to win and to be number one, and about beauty contests, and pu putting our, letting ourselves be judged by others. So those were subjects that we were really interested in and could keep going back to and could live our lives and see new ways in which those ideas are, are illustrated. And, and Ruby Sparks was really about our desire to control, and, and it was also about the creative process. Um, so. So, I mean, it's going to be, uh, it's going to, I'm taking advantage of the fact that I'm up here. So, do we have a next project yet? <laughs> well. Um, we're, we're working with Dan Klaus, the comic book artist, um, who did he, uh, Eight Ball and Art School Confidential. And, and Ghost World, the movie Ghost World. But he's a, this, primarily a comic book writer, but he's written screenplays. And he wrote a pilot for HBO called The Landlord. And um, we really... In this case, we read the script for the pilot, and the character, the main character, just really spoke to us. He, he made us laugh, and he actually voiced a lot of feelings we have about uh, the world that we live in. <laughs> so, you know, it, it depends. It's different things. But this, in this case, it was the, the voice of that character that really drew us in. So is this the next one? 
think well, so. we'll see. You know, you never know. You never know. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, there's a couple of like simple things that we did. One, we workshopped the movie um, actually with other actors so we could practice a little bit, understand the scenes. We acted them out ourselves in our studio where it, it was really bad, but we... <laughs> For no one, you know, you no know, one but, was watching. But, but we, we knew the feelings that we were exploring and that we were going to ask our actors to, to explore, so that's really important. We knew how hard it was. And then, actually, I think the thing that really um, sort of set the tone for the whole movie was we had a week of rehearsals with everybody. So the whole cast, um, all six of them, and we, we didn't read, we did one read through of the script, and then for the rest of the time, we just worked on developing the relationships between all the characters and, you know, kind of built the family. So we did exercises like we had them write letters to each other and then read them. Um, in back to each other, and, and then it was all done in character. And we took one day where we took a van out, and all six of them, and we filmed it. But we just had them, Im you know, improvise. So as a family, and they went bowling, and you know, we went they went to dinner, and you know, so it was just kind of getting them into the experience of being a member of that family was. And and by the end of that week, it just felt like everybody knew their character completely. They knew their relationship to every other character in the movie. Um, so I think that kind of rehearsal, for us anyway, that kind of rehearsal is just super valuable where you're not reading the script and you're not acting, you're not blocking the scenes because that, that's easy and if, if you do your homework, the blocking shouldn't take that long. Um, it's really getting the relationships and getting the, the actor um, to understand the character the way you see it. So. And you know, you, I think the key thing is not talking your actors to death. Yeah. You can just speak tell them too much and there's a point at which it's it's kind of impossible to act on a giant essay. <laughs> so. And you, you always want to get them, I mean, we, we always say we want to get them out of their heads as much as possible. So the less you talk, the less they think. I so think. we had a, a game of dodgeball between Steve and uh, Greg Kinnear. And I'll tell you, when, when you get hit by a dodgeball, you start to develop a relationship with someone and, and <laughs> resentment, and you, you, you know, there's like a history there. Yeah, well, and then when we went bowling, they were super competitive with each other, which is kind of what happens throughout the whole movie. Steve is really driving uh, Greg's character crazy. So, you know, it's just, if you kind of look at the dynamics of the relationships in the movie and think about how can you explore those in rehearsals and, um, or, you know, help start developing them in rehearsal. Um, we still do direct commercials and, and you know, videos are, are kind of harder to get going these days, um, so we probably won't do many of those, but um, they're very different. Obviously, they're still storytelling. The thing that, that's tough about um, commercials is that, well, one, there's like a, a, a giant committee of people all watching the monitor with you. Oh. And, and they all have their opinions, and they've been working on this project for months and months, and they hear it a certain way. And then there's also the issue of you have to tell it all in 30 seconds, so you, your actor may give you a great performance, and you say, thank you, that's you great, to... but I now you need to do it in half the time. And it's kind of gross. Um, <laughs> but but it, it's fun in that you can do um, different kinds of, you know, like those, those crazy um, uh, Sony PlayStation ads. You can do these wild stunts and, you know, try something but not have to do them for months like you would on a feature. So you can experiment with different forms. But I, I think it's a really different way of working. I mean, I, it, they're almost like two different jobs for us. I remember the first day of shooting Little Miss Sunshine and we were shooting a scene with Abigail and after the first take, we, we stood there and we were waiting for the committee to come and tell us what they thought. You know, we were, we were so not used to being actually the last say on, on a set. So I think that's what is so great about features is you, you feel this incredible responsibility, but, um, and you're, you're not making a committee decision, which is really nice. And then at the same time, I think in commercials, we did learn, um, you know, it taught us kind of how to negotiate 
the, the business in a lot of ways. I mean, you, you ultimately you still want to get what you want in commercials too. So you learn how to argue your case, and you know I think it helped us when we went to features to have to have had that experience of you know kind of winning an argument. <laughs> you know, because that's that's ultimately what you do have to do so much of in in this business is fight for what you want and and not. And the way you fight, it's not really a fight, it's just a discussion, but you really want to, um, you want to make your case a as powerfully as you can. It helps to have a partner, I think, but um, it, that's so much of what you, that's one of the skills that I think this business requires. And I, I would just add to that that I think one key thing is to think about, when you talk about fighting, it's not about fighting for your, for you, you're fighting about the work. So you don't, it's not about your ego versus their ego. So it's, if you can always structure your debates about what's right for the purposes of this thing outside of you, you, you already stand a better chance of getting what you want. Yeah. You just, know what I'm saying? Yeah. Not, so it's not an ego thing. It's really about the work and doing what's best. I, I call it the art of negotiating. And it's like, that's what you do. You negotiate for the vision for your project that you thought you all agreed upon at the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> and now you want to maintain it. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I, I think uh, when we had worked on Lone the Sunshine for so long and we'd really fought the studio to protect the movie that we thought <coughs> should be made, and um, the executive at Focus, who incidentally is now running the NYU Film School. <laughs> and who incidentally, yeah, who and who incidentally did teach a course he here. Called, he <laughs> called us <laughs> on the cell phone, and we'd worked with him for over two years. And he was very, you know, he was apologetic. I got bad news. We're dropping the film. <laughs> And Luckily, the call didn't drop. You know, the, the cell reception was okay. It, and it was just—it was just kind of shocking that we would be treated that way um, after investing so much. And you know, you do all that without getting a cent. You know, you don't get paid. So that was the lowest. But then it was a little bit like uh, the Wizard of Oz and the you know the ruby slippers. Our producers, you know, were like, "Oh my God! It's all this time. It's never going to happen." And then. One of our producers said, well, you know, I actually have billions of dollars. I'll pay for it myself. <laughs> you know, it's like yeah, you had the, the ruby slippers, slippers all along, you know, you, but wait a minute. But it, I, I actually think that that part of the process was really, you know, we, the, the thing we didn't do was just sit around and twiddle our thumbs while the movie wasn't getting made. We worked on it. We workshopped it. We kept working on the script. There were certain problems in the script that we felt we hadn't cracked, so we continued to work with Michael on the script. So, you know, we didn't waste that time, and, and it, our investment kept getting deeper and deeper in the movie, even though it wasn't happening. But I do think that that period of time where we were struggling and um, still loving it, that it sort of like, it put it to the test. It, um, so I think we probably learned more in that time period than if it had been, if we got the ruby slippers right away. So someone from the side of the stage is waving something at me, which I think is like a big hook. So I want to thank Valerie and Jonathan so much. Thank you.